Guys, my name is Gio. For those who don't know, hello, what up, YouTube? Uh, I believe in providing value up front. So instead of making a course for you guys to buy, uh, I share my knowledge for free. And all I ask really is if you like the content, please like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And as I just mentioned, we have over 100 people in the Discord. So please feel free to join the community. We got new traders like you probably that are trying to learn. Um, we also have some experienced traders in there, but I give updates in real time on what I'm thinking and I give uh, examples on things that we that I teach over your over YouTube and you know just real time updates. Um, so it's it's very beneficial for you. It would be very very beneficial. So I strongly suggest that you join the Discord. We got good people in there. Let me just make sure I'm recording. I think we're good. All right, beautiful. Now, guys, before we start, last thing before we start. This is like an announcement. So, oh my goodness. Um, I'm just at, at any point in the stream, uh, I'm going to ask you guys if you have any questions, at which point I will get you to unmute your mics. But until that happens, please keep your mics muted just for to preserve the quality of the stream. All right. With all that out of the way, guys, today we're starting, we're talking about, um, we're talking about time frames. Okay. How can we look at different time frames and how can we look? And how can we uh, really find our confirmations with specifically market cipher B? Now we are going to dabble in a little bit with our uh, traders reality indicator, in specific our vector candles. Anyone that's been following the channel or in the Discord knows that I love my vector candles. That's my favorite trading term of all time. So we'll come back to that in just a little bit. But today we're going to primarily focus on how can you look at all these different time frames and how can you know really what's going to happen next, right? Like we all know what our confirmations are supposed to be. And it's a lot easier to see in hindsight. And I think we can all agree on that, right? Like it's easy to see that we should have longed here, but how do you know in real time that you should have longed there? That's what we're gonna focus on. Uh, some of it's gonna be repetitive, but I'm sure some of it's gonna be new. So stick around to the end and I will try to provide as much value as I possibly can, okay? First things first, similar to, what I've mentioned in other streams, the higher term time frames, guys, is more important than the lower term time frames. As in, like it's a it carries a heavier weight. Okay. It takes precedent over the lower term time frames. However, your lower term time frames and your higher term time frames complement each other. Okay. Now I know that might sound co contradicting at first, but let's dive in. Okay. So let's use, we're gonna use our four hour as our sort of like uh, higher term time frame, right? And then we'll kind of just go down from there, right? So if you if we know that the four hour is relatively our higher term time frame, um, we know that it's gen generally weighted more than our lower term time frames, right? That being said, we know that the time frames move in oscillation, right? in terms of market cipher B. By the way, I forgot to mention, if you guys don't have this indicator on the bottom, it's called market cipher B. It is a paid indicator. Um, I don't recommend getting it if you're brand, brand new, come into the Discord and some of our community can guide you into which replacement um, indicators you can use. However, if you've been trading for a while and you're profitable and you've gotten value from my streams, then I do recommend 100% everyone get Market Cipher because there's nothing quite like it. I do go into detail about why it's better in my Market Cipher tutorial video. So go check that out if you haven't. But I do have an affiliate link. It is down below in the description. If you decide to pull the trigger on it, you can help support me and I really appreciate it. Okay. So we know that the higher term timeframes take longer to move, right? It's all in oscillation, up and down, up and down, right? So if this is our four hour, then our one hour oscillation will probably be like this right? And then our 30 minute will be literally double that, right? Simple, uh, simple math, right? Sine waves and whatever, cosine. I, I failed math. I, I don't know anything. Anyways. <laughs> uh, okay. So we know our higher term timeframes take longer to turn, which means that our green dots or our red dots, right? Carry more weight than our lower term time frame. Now, the question really is how do we know if this green dot right now is going to give us a continued move upwards, right? I mean, if you look back at our at our market cipher video, you know, money flow is, is thick, right? So if you're entering on the four hour, you wouldn't typically want to enter here because money flow is thick. We want to see perhaps something like this, right? Maybe a, maybe a bull div. Um, maybe this just comes back down to retest the lows. 
with money flow coming up, right? But <clears throat> depending on the time frames that you use and depending on whether you're a swing trader or you're a scalper or whatever the case is, um, you know, we need to look at the market. You need to understand the market like sentiment. You know, some of the words that are thrown around in the trading community is, you know, take a look at your environment, right? But no one really explains what that is. So on the higher term time frames, right now our environment, because we're ha we have a green dot here and it looks like we might have bottomed out, looks like we might have gotten, you know, somewhat of a W formation uh, or a double bottom. Our environment is bullish, but that's not to say that we can just long here and call it a day, right? So to get accurate entries and to get an accurate representation of your environment, you need to jump down into your lower term time frames. Now, I'm going to give you guys a couple of strategies um, and really, really simplify this for you. I know it's been a lot of talk so far, but I'm really going to simplify it. I just ask, try to stay with me, okay? Because it's not hard. It's not hard once you understand the concept, but it can be a little bit difficult to understand, okay? So four hour, we said, was, I guess, technically bullish right now because we have this, you know, green dot. Yeah, money flows in the red, so it's something to be aware, but we have the green dot. So now we jump down to our lower term time frame to really understand and get a grasp of what's going on. Here you can clearly see that money flow is coming down, right? And money flow is our prime indicator. Again, if you haven't seen our video, go watch it. Um, money flow is coming down on the one hour, which like, you know, we don't typically want to see, but we had a very strong deep wave right below the 60 line. Now, before I continue, I want to just briefly mention something for you guys. The time frames work. Um, they all work the same. Okay. So people can get really confused and say, Oh, Gio, the five hour or, or the five minute is bullish, but the 12 minute is bearish and the one hour is bullish, but the daily is bearish. So like, I don't know. Right. And it's easy to like get caught up across multiple time frames and just sort of like go crazy. Right. It's easy to do that. Um, but they all work the same. And when I, what I mean by that is if you look at market site for B on the one minute time frame, like let's get rid of the chart right now. Right. So this is market site for B on the one, on the one minute time frame. If we come to the one hour, I mean, aside from the money flow, and obviously, like, it looks different, it's it's the same concept, right? We still have the trigger waves, we still have money flow moving, it's just at a slower rate on the higher, ter higher term time frames. So the reason I'm bringing this up to you is because you can actually learn how the market moves by just watching the one minute time frame, okay? Now, we're going to go into... Um, thing like watching it in real time and how it's so much easier looking in hindsight and again, how you can look for your confirmations. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But right now, I really want you to focus that every single time frame works the exact same. It's just obviously a different duration of time. So if you pull this up without any chart, this could easily be the one hour. This could be the one day. It happens to be the one minute. It could be the 20 minute. It could be the 23 minute. It doesn't matter. They all work the same because market psychology remains the same no matter what, no matter when in time. All right. So when you're going to get stop hunted, you're going to get stop hunted on the one minute and then they're going to rip it back down. And when you're going to get stop hunted on the one hour, it's going to be the exact same thing and it's going to look the exact same way. Okay. So that's my first tip for you. I recommend whenever you can, whenever you're free, simply watch the one minute in real time. I don't mean go on replay mode and, you know, whatever, because we all know that looking in hindsight is not looking in regular time, right? We all, I mean, we should know that. I really hope we, know, we, we all know that. Spend some time watching the one minute because like I said, it will, the other time frames will behave the way that the one minute, um, behaves, right? Wow, we're pumping right now. Sorry, I got a little bit distracted. So it will help you understand what is possible on the higher term timeframes by watching the one minute because you can you can get a feel for it almost. I don't want to say like feel because there's emotions involved and whatever and, and we don't trade based on emotions, but you kind of get an idea on how the market moves. Just watch the one minute. Watch what happens, right? And then you can apply that to other, uh, other timeframes. Now, <clears throat> as we mentioned, our four hour um, moves faster, right? Our, our, sorry, our, our one minute obviously moves faster than our four hour. And that being said, whenever our, really any term time frame doesn't have to just necessarily be the, the higher ones, but whenever our, for example, one minute time frame 
Prince zero, uh, or sorry, Prince green dots below the zero line, right? What happens? Let's take a look at what happens, right? So every green dot that is below the zero line, and, and this is not using the confluence of money flow or anything else. Like I'm just circling the green dots below the zero line. You get somewhat of a reaction. Some are stronger than others, and I'm not saying long every green dot. Don't do that. You will get wrecked, obviously. But you get some sort of reaction. And this is on the one minute, okay? This is important to understand. So you get some form of reaction. Here, we had a little move up. Very little. And we're on the one minute time frame. So, you know, 0.1 of a percent. Again, don't long every dot you see. I cannot stress that enough. But, right, we get a green dot. I mean, that one kind of went sideways, but it didn't go down. And then we got our trigger wave, right? We had our, our, our anchor wave and our trigger wave. And then here we got a larger move up. Now, if you apply this concept to the higher term time frames, um, it can give you an idea of where the market is going to move. Because keep in mind, the higher term time frames take longer to move. So in this case, if we have a green dot here, and this is the one minute time frame, right? And we moved up, my goodness, sorry. And we moved up, uh, you know, give or take, let's say 1% over 12 minutes or 10 minutes. We'll keep, we'll keep numbers easy. So if we moved up 1% in 10 minutes on the one minute time frame, right? When you come to the one hour time frame, if you move 10 bars to the right, obviously the percentages will be different because the one hour carries more weight, but give or take 10 bars to the right is 10 hours. So now you know that in this area or when you get a, a, a green dot on the one hour, you can expect somewhat of a rise in price and it's over time, right? Like I said, all the time frames work similarly. Market Slifer B will re will act the exact same way on all different time frames. So, just on this example, I'm going to repeat it one more time because the one hour is an oscillator, just like all the other time frames, but they move slower. You have more time to react to this green dot where we can have somewhat of a pump, and the same remains true for the, even the larger time frames, right? Here we have what we consider an anchor wave and a trigger wave. And if all the time frames act, react similarly, we can expect somewhat of a reaction. And it, it doesn't mean that we're going to go higher always. It does not mean that. Obviously, you need to look at your other um, confluences, your other indicators, and, and so forth. But it means that we can expect somewhat of a move up for a certain amount of time, right? Let's just say in this case, it was only three bars. And let's just say it only made it here, which is like 6%. I say only, but welcome to crypto if you're from stocks, <laughs> because we move a lot better than stocks. Stocks are boring. Anyway, um, you can expect somewhat of a reaction just by measuring the time and by understanding that all the time frames work the same in terms of how they, um, how they, I guess, how they act, how they display our information. Okay, so that's that's something that you need to take into consideration whenever you're looking for any positions whatsoever, because that's going to really affect your bias. All right. Now, it's very difficult or let me. Let, OK, it's very easy to look in hindsight. Right. But it's very difficult to to look at all of these time frames, for example. Right. I, I use a lot of them. And if you're more experienced, I recommend like you can. But if you're a beginner or you're not seeing success in trading, I recommend only sticking to maybe like two or three. And we'll go over it now in terms of which time frames I would use for which kind of trader uh, that you that you are. I obviously don't know what kind of trader you are. Well, we'll go over what I mean and a couple of examples, okay? So if you're a, you know, so now you know this, like, you know that they all relate and they, and you know that in this case, you could potentially expect, you know, a few hours of upside. So the six hour and the one hour are already lining up, right? So we have an idea that price can continue higher, which I am in a long, as um, the Discord people saw prior to the stream. It's up. 116% right now. Um, I'm not too worried about it because we're, we're still pumping. So that's good. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so let's talk now the relation 
between the time frames and what you should look for. You can get really cloudy, okay, looking at all these time frames. Like I said, five minute could be bullish, 10 minute could be bearish, one day could be bullish, and you're like, what the hell? Like, I don't know what to do, right? So my advice to new traders um, or less experienced traders will be to stick to maybe two or three time frames. And depending on the kind of trader you are, depending on how much time you spend in front of the ch uh, the charts, will determine which time frames that you do. So let's talk scalpers first, okay? <clears throat> we'll talk traditional scalpers where, you know, you're in and out of the market, max one hour um, for each trade. And, and you know, you're, you're really trading on like the one and the three or whatever. So what I would do if I was a scalper was my 15 minute would be my environmental time frame. Okay, so I have an idea on what's going on in my environment based on the 15. Remember the example we used before. The six hour has a green dot. We know that all the time frames work the same uh, in terms of like market site for B. So we're already biased right now for the upside. Okay, so we, we know that. Now our 15 um, looks like it, it has some room to keep going, but it could be a little bit topped out right? Um, but our 15s are environmental time frame for the scalpers, what I would do, right? 15s are environmental uh, time frame. And then <clears throat> what I would do is I would have my kind of execution time frame. For those who have been in the previous streams and uh, have, have watched the videos, you guys know, like when I scalp, I like to scalp on the three minute. Um, but I use my three minute and my 15 minute in tandem because they 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 talk to each other okay they talk to each other which i'll talk about in, in a little bit but they talk to each other right they're they're related to each other so in this example we have our 15 minute which obviously we got the bullish div right and we know that the market cipher b works the same on all time frames so we could have already expected quite a few candles of up so this rise should not be a surprise to anybody right and not anybody in my discord anyway but if our 15s are environmental, we come to our three, right? And actually, sorry, back on the 15, we, we, we look like we can be a little bit topped out, right? At least temporarily. We might continue. Money flow is looking good and money flow is going into the green. So that's what we like to see. However, we are printing um, dots above the 60 line and we're actually like closer to 80, right? So in the short, short term, we're looking for bearish signs now on what I would call our execution time frame. So this is our environment time frame, right? If you're scalper, 15 is your environment, right? You can draw all your support and resistance and you know do your TA here, right? And if this, if you don't know what this is, guys, like I made a whole video on it, so go back and watch it. But you know, you can draw your trend lines, which I'm not a fan of, but you can draw your support and resistance, whatever. Uh, simultaneously with knowing that we look like we could be topped out on the 15 minute time frame. So now we jump to our three, which is our execution time frame. And now we're looking for bear signs because based on our environmental time frame, which is our 15, we know that we could be topped out and now we're looking for bear signs. So on the three minute, we have money flow thick, right? But we are printing our bear divs. We got one here, right? And we actually have two. So we got two bear divs going on right now on our execution time frame. So if you're scalping, right, this could be a safe short to take because our environmental time frame is topped out, right? It's at it's at it's at the top, and our execution time frame is showing bear divs. So right now you have no reason to to be surprised, right? If price comes down, and you could be like again on the six hour, we look bullish, right? So people will just gig along right now and then the price will come down like it's going to. And then they're like, what the hell? Like, you know, the six hour has a green dot. Why, why uh, am I in the red right now? And depending on obviously your position size, et cetera, will determine like how much you're down, but they'll be like, what the hell? I don't understand. But this is how you have to approach um, really, again, whatever kind of time frames that you're trading. So, 15, we're bearish because, I mean, we're not bearish. I would say we're neutral because money flow is coming up, but we're, we're pretty topped out, right? And look at what happened here when we were topped out. We came down for how many bars? Let's see. Give or take 
like four hours, right? Am I saying that this four hours is going to be down? No. But if you're scalping right now, you're looking for shorts. You're not looking for longs, right? Obviously, you can do your cheat sheet entry, et cetera, but that will, uh, that's a little bit more complicated. So, so this is a tip for you. Again, whatever time, whatever kind of trader that you are, pick an environmental time frame, which is your 15 minute if you're a scalper. And then pick your execution time frame, which is your three minute, right? This is how you know you're going to get your signal. And then um, I'll take it even further and say your entry time frame, right? So on the three minute, money flow is coming up, right? So it doesn't look too safe. However, on the one minute, you can see money flow is coming down, right? So on the one minute, we look a little bit better to take that short. And if I wasn't streaming, I might have taken the short. I would have obviously looked at my levels, but uh, actually we have a golden pocket here, so I would have taken this short. Um, but that's how you can look at timeframes across the board for when you're scalping. Now for the day traders, which are, for those who don't know, when you're taking maybe one or two trades a day, as opposed to like 10 trades a day for the scalpers, um, what I would do is use the one hour for your environmental time frame, one to like, I guess one to four, but like really I, I like to hang around the one. And then use the 15 minute or something close as your execution time frame. Okay. So on the one hour, right, we look like, I mean, we bottomed out. We had a few hours of up already. We do have money flow still in the red, right? But it's potentially curving up, but it's kind of starting to curve down. The VWAP is kind of down. So I, I, I don't feel great about our environment on the one hour. Not to mention, within our volume profile, we're also in the top quadrant here, uh, or top third, I should say. So primarily, we are looking for shorts, right? If you come to our execution time frame, we're getting a very small uh, bear div, right? You guys know I don't like to see bear divs that are part of the same wave. I like to see something like this, for example. And then like maybe this comes down, this comes up higher, and then we get another bear div. I like to see that. But, um, you know, it is what it is. And if you jump in now to our shorter term time frames, you could see that, okay, maybe this is a good short because now you're jumping down to our three, which is kind of, again, iffy. But then our one is giving us more of a confirmation that the money flow is coming down. I'm not saying it's going to come down right now, guys. If you're like going to short right now because of what I'm saying, don't do it. But I'm just saying that's how you can use multiple time frames to, um, to jump in. So when I'm not, when I'm not scalping, when I'm day trading, um, I use the one hour for my environmental. I use the 12 hour for my, or sorry, the 12 minute or 15 minute, one of the two doesn't matter for the execution. And then because I got good at scalping, I use the three for my, I guess, like further zoomed in execution. And then I always enter on the one, right? I enter on the one, I exit on the one, um, and I take my profits, whatever. But that's how, those are the main timeframes that I use if I am, uh, if I'm day trading. Now for the swing traders, it's a different story because obviously swing traders are like, you don't really do TA as often. You maybe do it once a week and you're in a position for like a week you know, a few days, maybe a couple of weeks, sometimes even like a month or even two, like depending on the market sentiment, right? So how can we get into our, um, our, I guess, overall environment on the, when you're scalping? What I like to do is I like to use the four hour um, because four hour is small enough to kind of get some detail, but it's big enough to have a sense of the environment, right? Like this is only... 100 candles, right? Not not that many candles, 100 candles and and we're all we're all the way back to like middle of April. So, you know, it, it, 4 hours pretty good. You can also use the daily to kind of just have a sense of what's going on, but I use the 4 hour. I will do my TA based on the 4 hour and I will probably enter on somewhere between like the 30 to the 1 hour will be my execution time frame. Um <clears throat> And then again, like, you know, you can, you can assess your risk and stuff, which we haven't done a, re a risk management video yet. I will do that soon. Um, but you can assess your risk based on the type of entry that you're doing and the type of trader that you are. Um, so you don't really care about what the one minute is doing when you're a swing trader, right? Like when you're entering on the 30 minute, you would have ideally entered somewhere down here, but you're not really too worried about the one minute because 
you know, if you enter here, your stop loss isn't going to be like right here if you're a swing trader. Your stop loss is probably going to be like somewhere down here, right? So those are the time frames. I'm going to repeat them one more time just so everyone knows, um, but it's important to know. So for the scalpers, 15 minute is your environmental time frame. Your three minute is your execution. And then, I mean, I enter on the one, but you can enter with the three. Um, those are the three time frames that I want you to focus on, right? Don't look at the other ones. You can get super mixed up. It can get super confusing. Don't look at the other ones. Don't worry about it. For the for the day traders, your one hour is the environmental. Your entry is the 12 or 15. And then I guess you can enter on the three and the one if you like are good at it. But those are your time frames. And then for your swing traders, you know, four hour, uh, enter on like maybe the 24 or the 30 minute and then kind of hold it out. Right now, I mentioned that um, the higher the term time frames, the more weight that they carry and that they communicate with one another, which they do. So how do we know that this is going to even give us a green dot, right? Like it's not uncommon to see something like this. It's not uncommon to see like, I mean, okay, sure. We have a red dot and then a green dot right after or a green dot and then a red dot right after, right? How do we know? that the green dot here is going to play out, right? I don't know that this green dot is that this green dot story is going to play out. It seems like it is right now, but at the end of the day we don't know, right? So how can we know? Give me one sec, sorry. Ah, I just got to lubricate the pipes a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> how do we know, right? Well, we said that they talk to each other, which means we're going to use the 1 and the 4 for an example, okay? This is going to be kind of where it gets a little bit complicated, and I want you to try to follow along, okay? And I, after this, I'm going to ask you guys if you have any questions, but this is where you, I might lose you. So try to pay attention, okay? Try to, I, I'm going to try my best to articulate this. So, and we're going to use the one and the four. So if we know that the four hour carries more weight than the one hour, then we can assume that the one hour will follow the four hour. Right. So right now we're bullish kind of money flows red. We don't like that, but for for example's sake, we're bullish on the four hour. Okay. When we're on the one, if if we're printing a green dot on the four hour and we're we've already established that the four hour is bullish and we come to the one hour now, it's safe to assume most of the time that. This green dot, for example, is going to give us a move up, right? Because the four hour is bullish and the four hour carries more weight, it's safe to assume that this green dot will continue up and doesn't do like, like this green, green dot, red dot, like kind of BS, right? That, that they love to give us, right? Because the four hour holds more weight and it carries more weight. Now, they talk to each other, so it's not a one-way street, right? That's the example if the one hour were to follow. But how do we know when the one hour is going to drag the four hour down, right? Well, in this case, again, the four hour takes, takes precedent over the one hour. But we can see here, like, it's not... Again, money flows in the red, right? So it's not like definitive, we're going to go up forever and, and call it a day. So we come into the, the one hour to get a, a closer, like more detail on the move. And um, how can I word this? Like this is, it's a little bit difficult and, and it, it can be hard to understand. <clears throat> the one hour, because the four hour is iffy, right? It's not 100% like, oh, we're going to wherever 30K. Because it's iffy, we can come to the one hour and say, all right, if the one hour is bearish, then we can do something like this, right? If the four hour, I mean, okay, I simplified it. If the four, if your higher term time frame is iffy, then you can move to the lower term time frames to have a better understanding on what can happen into the future. Right now, again, we said the four hour is relatively bullish, but we already got somewhat of a significant move, right? So right now in this specific example live with between the four hour and the one hour, I would say that the one hour, it should not surprise you. And it, you know, if we do something like this, maybe we take these this high and then we come and drop down. 
because the four hour money flow is red, right? Yeah, we have an anchor and a trigger, but the money flow is red. It's kind of neutral, right? So it's iffy. But the one hour, um, we have money flow clearly coming down. Obviously, you're going to use your points of confluence or whatever. But this is an example of when the one hour will leak into the four hour, right? If this, if something like this plays out, we have a red dot here, and then something like this happens, then we know that the four hour is going to give us that green dot, red dot formation and continue downwards. Okay. Now, alternatively, if the one hour is iffy, as in we don't really know which way it's going to go, it's not great, whatever, it doesn't look too well, but the four hour is definitive. So let's just say, Let me get a good example. Let's, I mean, we're going to go back, but let's just say here, right? Like this is a pretty, pretty, this should have been a pretty easy long. Okay. Should be a pretty easy long. If you don't know why that's an easy long, go back and watch the, the market cipher video, but this should be an easy long. So if the four hour is giving us a definitive green dot and we're like, okay, we're going up, right? It's we're, we're going up, but the one hour is iffy. It's safe to assume that the one hour will follow the four hour. Okay, so that's how they can talk to each other, right? Think of whichever one is iffy. And then I guess look at the big brother or little brother of it. And we know that the four hour takes more precedent over the one hour. So in general, we're favoring what the higher term time frames show. Okay. And then another way to catch bottoms, for example, are when you see divs. So this four hour green dot, right? Before it was forming, we knew that it could form. So we come to the one hour. Is the one hour giving us anything that is bullish? I mean, not really, right? But if we come to our, let's say our 12 minute, right? You can start to see that the the 12 minute gave us our nice bull div right here. Front ran my level by a little bit. I was very upset. Um, I managed to get in, but a little bit late. But we had the, the bull div on the 12 minute, which means we can assume that this bottom is going to hold out on the one hour, which means we can assume that this four hour, hour will give a green dot. And that's how you can use three time frames to, for example, swing trade. Now, I don't know how high this is going to go. Money flow is not what we like to see, but that's the idea. This is the approach that you have to take. So you look at the bull divs and you look at the money flow and whatever on your execution time frame to know if your higher term time frames are going to follow through when you're catching reversals. And remember, on the one minute, um, it's, you know, you can follow the market and, and market cipher B on the one minute. And what happens when we get a green dot or a green dot below zero, we get somewhat of a reaction. So on the one hour, we can expect somewhat of a reaction. Now, how do we know if we're going to get it? We look at the divs on the lower term time frame to see if our lower term time frame will affect the higher term time frame. Okay, I know that was a lot. I know it can get confusing. I know. Right. I've looked at so many time frames before and I've been like, man, this is bullish. This is bearish. Like, this is BS. Right. I've done it too. But that's um, how they can communicate with each other, how they relate to each other. And again, it all comes back to, I guess, technically the lower term time frames. All the higher term time frames are, are just slower oscillation. Right. The one minute moves like this, the 10 minute moves like this. And then the one hour moves like this. So you have more time to react. And to get that bounce, to get that reaction, you're looking for divs, you're looking for money flow on your execution time frame. Now, I've been talking nonstop for a while. And again, I know that that was a lot and I know that it's confusing. I promise you, once you understand the concept, it's not that difficult to understand or it's not that easy. To, it's not that difficult to see in real time and to grasp, but understanding it is going to take some time and it's going to take some practice. Um, I'm going to open up the floor right now. If you guys have any questions, please unmute and, uh, and I'll try my best to answer them. You're right, George. Uh, sorry, I was late. Uh, 
No problem. Uh, I, I could I could ask only for a uh, long story short in one minute. Oh man, I can't I cannot go through that. Yeah, yet. yeah, that's why. Right. No worries, no worries. I'm gonna watch it on YouTube. Yeah, no go worries. back and watch. This one is like one that you might have to watch a couple times. Like I said, like it's not it's not hard once you understand it, but it's gonna take some time to grasp it, and it's gonna take some real life, um, like in real time practice. Um, but if you have any issues afterwards, like we can do a one-on-one, -on -one, no problem. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Yeah, that was a silly question. I know yeah, we yeah. probably yeah, told yeah, a lot sorry, about man. it. Yeah, it's been like, I don't even know how long no we've worries. been streaming yeah. for. Yeah. Uh, okay, anyone else have, have any questions? Oh, hey, Gio, this is CJ. Hey. So I just wanted to check. Uh, so the recent bounce, which we scored on one hour. Yeah. So... How do we get to know that the I mean, the the bounce will happen? Uh, why am I saying this is that from the bottom? Uh, we were thinking. I mean, I was thinking, not we, but I was thinking that it will at least come to the golden pocket, but it did not. Mm -hmm. So how do we come to know that it will front run? How to catch that move? Sure. Um, we were waiting for the price to come to a golden pocket, right? But at times, you know, it it front run yeah. and yeah. Uh, re, uh, you know returns back from uh, fifty. Yeah, uh, good. Point fifty. Good question, CJ. I'm just gonna ask you to mute your mic because it's still doing that thing. Um, but I am gonna answer your question. Good question. The truth, man, is you know you don't always you don't always get it exactly. You know, um, look, this was me today. And, you know, I was front run by, I mean, this is not very much, $20, right? This whole box was my zone and the price came down to here. But really, like, the way to know, <clears throat> the way to know if you're going to get front run, I mean, I guess there's two answers here. But one is you're really looking for those divs. Now, I really, I, I expected it to come lower, okay? Like, you're never going to have exactly 100% accurate entries, right? Like, your entries are typically a zone, like I did here. And if you look down, like, this is a pretty decent-sized zone, right? We have $300 zone here. Um, but I guess, in short, like, there's no real way to know. But here, there was a clue, right? We had... We had a div over time, right? With, uh, I mean, money flow is kind of iffy, but we did have a div. And I was expecting this level. So, you know, if it tapped, I actually had an order right on this line. So I just missed it. If it tapped it, I would have hit it. Unfortunately, it didn't come down that far. But that's also, that also doesn't mean that this red dot couldn't have given us something like this and hit all those. I had a few entries like that. Um, the answer, though, is really CVD right? That's your best kind of confirmation. CVD is not something that I've done uh, a video on yet. I will get to it, but your answer is CVD, right? CVD in short is when you're getting absorption, right? People are shorting, more people are shorting. Um, actually, well, this was actually shorting exhaustion. This was not absorption. But anyways, that's that's another video. Yeah, unfortunately, man, you can't really like when when you're getting front run, it sucks. But you know, like I had to mark it in. I didn't even mark it in here. I marked I marked it in on ETH. I'm not even in Bitcoin right now, but I'm in on ETH. Um, and ETH also front ran, front ran my level. Um, my level was this red line, and I got front run as well. So I actually ended up getting in ETH like, I don't even know somewhere up here. But yeah, you know, that just comes down to your the accuracy of your TA and how much, I guess, risk you're willing to put on in terms of like your position sizes and how much drawdown you're willing to take. For me, I like to have super sniper entries, which means if my, if my uh, you know, long zone is right here, then I'm not longing until it, until it hits it. And I typically have orders set when I think it could come down, et cetera. But yeah, that's unfor it's unfortunate. But sometimes you get front run and you can't really know. And when you start to see a reaction off of that level, that's when you can say, okay, well, I didn't get it. I didn't get in on where I wanted to. Let me start to look for an entry now, right? And you kind of like adjust. 
Have yeah, we... I mean that's what the problem happens, right? Because uh, sometimes it front runs from from fifty, and then it it front runs for a for some time for at five five uh, minute level, <sighs> and then it price dips down heavily at yeah seven eight six, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we, yeah. sorry, go on, go so on. So if we get enter, if we get enter at uh, fifty, I mean we get stopped out maybe, or probably our stop losses hit. Yes. Uh, so you have to just be aware of when you're longing from, let's say here, right? When you're lo like, let's just say, let's just say your level was here and you missed it, right? It, it's price started to move without you. So then you ended up longing from here. Well, you got to understand that this is still your box. This is still your box, which means you, you can't be surprised if price ends up still coming down here. So if you catch the long and you're in profits, take your profits, right? Take some along the way, something along the way. And, and I have videos that show when to take profits, whatever. But take something along the way because at any point, like, you know, I didn't get my entry here, but that's not to say that I won't. That doesn't mean that we're going to go to 30K from right here. We could, you know, do something like this. Sorry, CJ, I'm just going to ask you to mute your mic just because it's doing that thing and it's um, just for the, the quality of the stream. Um, okay, so it, we could still do this, whatever, and then on the one hour, come down, get like, or let's say it's like this, get a bear div, come down, hit the box, right, giving us a bull div over time. Like, just because it front ran us doesn't mean that we're good forever and start longing like crazy, you know? Yeah, it's important to be aware that this was your zone. Yes, they front ran it. But because they front ran it, you need to be aware that it can come back. And like you said, man, oftentimes it does come back. And you're like, what the hell? And usually, like, you don't get a pump like this big. When you get front run, you'll you'll dance around like this. And then they'll come down, dip one more time, and then bounce. Right? This might have been the bottom. It might not. I don't know. But, you know, front being front run kind of sucks. But it is what it is. You just have to be aware that it can still play out what you wanted. And to be honest, like, you can't really be too upset with it. Because that means that you were right, you know? Like, yes, I was off by 20. Actually, it was on this chart here. I was off by, like, literally 504 was the bottom, and my box was 480. So I was literally off by $25 on Bitcoin, right? This, if anything, gives me more confidence to enter my next trade because you're never, man, you're never going to be 100% accurate. No one's ever going to tell you, buy exactly here, and this is the exact bottom because you don't know. Right. So again, it, it's not a great answer to your question, but the truth is, is like no one really knows. And it's unfortunate when you get front run. But when it is, when, when you identify that you're getting front run, the best thing you can do is be like, okay, we got a strong reaction off of here, which means this is likely a bottom. I'm going to try to look to enter, but I have to be aware that price can still come back in this zone. And then, you know, kind of just play it out from there. <clears throat> Thank you. I think uh, you explained it really well. So thank you. Perfect. Thanks. Anyone else have any questions? I see. Uh, sorry, I don't know how to say your name. C Noel. C Noel. Um, how do I use Trading View? High average daily range and low average daily range in Confluence. Good question. Let's pull up our Trading View, guys. If you don't have this indicator, I'm talking to, um, I guess, really all the new people in the Discord, but also on YouTube. If you don't have this indicator. Go to indicators, type in T Traders Reality Main. This will give you your vector candles and other tags like this. And this is um, what we're talking about now. I have a tutorial on that as well. So go back and watch the videos if you haven't. Okay. How can we use that in Confluence? I'm actually glad you asked this question because um, this can also give you an idea of like the vectors, right? So... This is something that if you've been following the channel, if you've, if you've been in the Discord, I, I talk about this pretty frequently. I'm just going to repeat myself one more time. When you're looking at whatever the time frame you're on, you need to be aware of the vectors within that time frame. Okay? Right now, we're getting a red dot on the, the 15 minute. Excuse me, I'm hiccuping. We're getting a red dot on the 15 minute here. Okay? When we look at our, our our vector confluence, this red dot, even if it comes down just that much, can give us a, a massive div. Sorry, one second. 
All right. It can give us a massive div. So um, I know your question was about the average daily range, and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But this is something that's very, very important, okay? When we trade, we follow the money. We don't do what retail does. Every single other channel on YouTube, minus Tino's, talks about triangles and breakouts and, and all that crap. 95% of retail traders lose. Why are you learning from retail? You follow the money. The money is the vector candles. These zones are where money is, if you can see it. It's very faint, but these are the zones um, that the money's at. So if you're at a red dot on the 15 minute, you need to know that price can come all the way back down here, all the way down. It can come and grab this. You cannot be surprised. And that goes to the same for all time frames. Okay, since we're on the, the time frame conversation. This is very possible to come down. Yes, we left these vectors behind, right? I'm not crazy about it either. I wanted it to go lower, and obviously you saw me get front run. That's not to say that we won't. We could potentially, you know, have a cheat sheet entry here and continue down and hit these vectors, right? We're on the one hour. We can expect m price to come down here. No one is allowed to say, at least not in my Discord, that, oh my goodness, 25K, what the hell? It took me by surprise, but we but we had this up, oh, whoops, but we had this up channel, whatever, like, I don't even know if this is a bullish or bearish pattern because I don't I don't trade patterns like that, but, oh, the, it, it was supposed to hold, like, you know, man, nah, you follow the money and you can apply that with your time frames. You pay attention to your vector candles based on the time frames. I go into that in more detail in the other videos. Go back and watch them. Now, your low average daily range and your high average daily range. <laughs> it's it's not really a, a time frame kind of question, right? Or a, a time frame kind of confluence. But you just know that on average, right? Your low ADR and your high ADR, this is your average movement in Bitcoin for that day, right? Um, you know, we came down to our low ADR. So in general, we should be looking for longs as well. We're, we're in confluence with our psychological low as well. We're in our confluence with our, with our vector candle that we had here to recover and the low of the range, right? So we had quite a bit of confluence as we were coming down here. Um, but now we're pumping up to the high ADR, which completely the opposite of what happened just a few hours ago, four or five hours ago, we should primarily be looking for shorts now, right? We have the high ADR confluence with our value area high, like total area. We might SFP this, which for those who don't know, it's a swing failure pattern, which I will make a video on, but we might SFP that. Actually, it kind of looks like we're going to, right? Take out all the people that were shorting this whole way and then potentially continue to roll over. Um, but yeah, that's really, I mean, I don't really look too much at these tags. It is good with confluence, but keep in mind, like what your average range is, is not, uh, is like, it's just an average, right? Like it's not uncommon for Bitcoin to just blow these completely, right? It's just extra, uh, confluence. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? <clears throat> no, no questions. So you guys are all going to be time frame uh, masterminds now. Um, about that uh, previous uh, question, uh, I'm just wondering uh, if we can't say that uh, what is going to happen in one minute. Could we see it in 30 seconds time frame or 50 seconds time frame on a, you know, on a um, premium trading view uh, where know. some bull div going to give the signal a little bit earlier? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, like it's all it's all relative, right? Like the 30 second is is relative to the one minute the way that the one minute is relative to the two minute. Right. It's just half the time. So, yeah, I mean, technically you can do that. I would be kind of aware, like be more aware of like the fact that those signals don't necessarily always play out because the candles happen so fast. Right. Like on the higher term timeframes, it's only 
it's only safe to assume that this green dot will at least somewhat play out because it takes so long for these candles to do something. And we know on the one minute, or we know that the the uh, they're like market cipher B will react the same across all time frames. So on the one minute, when you have a green dot, you only have give or take, right? Like in general, let's just say this green dot, you only have five minutes to react. Whereas on the four hour, you have like 20 hours to react. You know what I mean? So just be careful with using the, the especially, that's why I don't even use the one minute really. Like I enter on the one minute, yes, but I'm, I consider my three minute as execution because it's like, it's less foggy. That's why you got to be very careful with the 30 second because your 30 second oscillation is like, you know, whereas the one minute is like this and then the three minute is like this and the four hour is like, right? So that's kind of like, yeah. personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even worry about the, the 30 second because you're not going to catch the exact bottom and the exact top anyways. And if you think that you're going to resort to your 30 second to catch that, then you're using market cipher wrong because market cipher should be in confluence with your TA, right? So, you know, oftentimes, and I'm going to go ahead and say this, if this is my long zone, oftentimes the chart don't look great, right? Like market cipher doesn't look great to enter, but you kind of just do. Like, it looks like it's iffy, right? Like, it could happen, it could not, but you kind of just take the risk on it. But it's a lot safer than taking the risk here, you know? So, yeah, I would I would stay away from the, the second time frames. But, I mean, if you're, like, a super scalper and you want to use, like, your three minute for the environmental and enter on the 30 second, like, man, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what to do. But I I don't use it. Yeah, I got the, the point. Yeah, nice one. Thank you. No worries. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah I was wondering if is it isn't too late to enter into a position on the 15-minute time frame? Because... So what you're waiting for yeah. on the 15, if you're entering on the 15, like you're using that as your execution and you need to see what the one hour is doing, one hour is okay, but you're waiting mm -hmm. for a dip, right? You're not longing up here. And you know what? If this mm -hmm. gives another green dot and then a red dot and then a green dot and then a red dot and money flow keeps doing this and price just, you know, keeps doing this, then oh well. You know, if you're entering on the 15, then oh well. You know, I don't, I don't have a better answer. Um, this is the place to long, not this. This is, this is where you should be looking for shorts. But if yeah. you decided, oh man, the price is pumping. Like I think it's going to keep going. It's blowing all my resistance levels or whatever the case is, which I don't recommend. But let's just say you wanted to do that. Well, then you can jump down to the lower term time frames when eventually like this will give you somewhat of a, of a pullback, right? Or this will, right? Even if price doesn't come this far down, if price just like does that, eventually you'll have somewhat of like a, a curve here or it could curve below the zero. Ideally below the zero with thick money flow because then we're looking for cheat sheet entries, right? If you don't know what that is, go back and watch it. But let's just say eventually sure. it will do this. This is what you're looking for. Somewhere close to this area is where you can look for longs. And then to find out if it's gonna actually continue the cheat sheet entry, if you're looking to front run it, you can go to a three minute, for example, and look for divs. You can look for um, money flow crossing upwards. You can look for cheat sheet entries on the three minute, right? So when I miss moves, um, that's what I do, right? Like that's how I will uh, sort of enter and like catch it in the middle of nowhere. But again, you need to be aware, and we'll talk about this in risk management, that if you enter on a 15-minute cheat sheet entry, your, your uh, stop loss, I mean, if it bounces, then it goes below the low, great. But if you're kind of like, bef before you actually are confirmed that you're in a winning trade and it's moved upwards, your stop loss needs to be here, right? So you need to be able to take a 3% drawdown, right? If you're on 10x leverage, then you're down 30%. So 
that's something to consider as well. But that's how you can, um, you know, I guess use like if you're looking to enter on the 15, you're looking for the cheat sheet entry. That's how you can find your continuation trades. And then your stop loss will yeah. go under the low. And, and um, I don't recommend front running it, but if you choose to, then yeah. And uh, you normally are waiting for for your level. You are waiting for for the price to to come to your level, and see the reaction to that happens on that level, and then you decide to enter or not, or you are just like following the the money flow and those no, things. No, on no, no. So so cipher. so this market cipher can make you a lot of money and it can lose you a lot of money. If you're just trading on market cipher, you're going to lose. I promise you, you're going to lose because this thing can show you completely different signals than what you think. And then the exact opposite thing happens. This works the best when you're at key levels, when you get bull divs at a key level, that's, what's going to give you the bounce. Whereas when you get bull divs, look at this, right? This was not a key level. Okay. I'm going to zoom in here. We're on the 15 minute time frame. This was not a key level. But yeah, we got a bull div. But look what happened. Like, yeah, we went up a little bit, but then bang. When you get a bull div at a key level, look what happened. Bang. You know what I'm saying? So in general, you're, you want to look for, you want to do your TA. You want to find a clear level. You want to draw a box the way that I do. And again, I give updates in the Discord. So the YouTube people, if you made it this far, thank you. But uh, not but. <laughs> thank you. And join the Discord. Join our community. But yeah, you, you draw your, your squares, you find your levels, and then you look at Market Cipher. I cannot stress this enough. I've lost so much money just trading on Market Cipher. It's not fun. It absolutely sucks. Don't do it. Wait for your levels, set alerts, and then come look at um, you know, what's going on at the time. And you can set your alerts based on the kind of trader that you are. So if you're, if you're day trading and your one hour is your environmental time frame, then do your TA on the one hour. Right? Like draw your fibs here. If you're, if you're a, uh, a scalper, then do your TA. Oh, that's my uh, trading view alert. Then do your TA on the 15 minute, which is your environmental time frame, and then execute on the smaller time frame. If you're a day trader or a swing trader, you know, do it on the daily, do it on the four hour, right? Whatever process that you take, um, you need to, that's what you need to do, right? This green dot, for example, uh, just to go back to my last point, look at these, these vectors that we have, these vector zones up here. Like, I mean, I don't think it's going to happen, at least not that fast, but you can't be surprised if price comes all the way back up here because on the four hour, we're getting a green dot and the four hour, we have vectors up here, right? I don't know if it's going to happen and I don't, I don't really, I, I haven't, I don't trade like this, so I can't say it will or won't, but you know, you can't be surprised if it comes up there. <clears throat> All right, thanks. Yeah, no worries. Anybody else? <clears throat> no, I think we're good then. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess we're good. Just to recap real quick, higher term time frames are take more precedent over the lower term time frames. However, they communicate with one another. Whichever one is iffy between your two time frames, we'll focus on the other one. If your four hour looks good and your one hour is iffy, it's probably safer to follow the four hour. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Once you're already in a trade and you're already in a winning trade, this is how you can start to determine whether your scalp turns into a swing trade or not, okay? Right now, our five minute is just absolutely going crazy, right? We're, we're looking good on the five minute. We have higher time, or we have thick money flow, which as we discussed earlier, the earlier the time frames will leak into the later time frames and vice versa. So, if you entered on the one minute for a quick scalp and you took profits and your stop losses at the entry, great. But now you don't know if it's going to keep running and it's going to become a swing trade. Well, number one, I mean, you're going to do, if it's a swing trade, you're going to do your TA on like the one hour or the two hour or like the four hour, you're going to do your TA. So you're already going to kind of expect this to be a swing trade area. 
But let's just say you, you're not that good at TA. You manage to catch the trade. You don't know if it's going to be a swing trade. You're kind of iffy, whatever. Once you start to see the confirmations leak across all of the high, like the the higher the time frames, that's how you can consider it somewhat of a swing trade, right? Like our 24 minute when you long when you longed. Let's just say you longed on on you were scalping and you longed on the five minute and you caught this. Well, now our 24 minute kind of like looks promising, right? So it looks, it's starting to look better. Now on the one hour, you know, we got some movement up, right? So now you can shift your thinking from the five minute that you entered to now, for example, the one hour, because we got a pretty significant move. So you can shift your thinking now to the one hour. And then if the two hour continues, then you can shift your thinking to the two hour, right? And then eventually to the four hour. And that's how your scalps can turn into swing trades. Once you have your confirmations and you're way away from your, your entry and like, I mean, this is super thick, right? Like your scalps don't typically do this. Now you can be like, okay, well, let me see what the higher term timeframes are looking like, right? Then maybe your environmental time frame turns into your execution. Be like, you know what? This could come down, but I could see something like this happen and money flows increasing. So I'm going to hold it, right? We'll come down. And then something like that might happen, which I actually think it might, right? That's how you can turn your scalps into um, or into swing trades. Now that's a little bit more advanced. I don't necessarily recommend, you know, the newcomers to to even focus on that. However, you know, it is a quick uh, quick thing I, I would like to add. <clears throat> All right, guys. If no one else has any questions, I'm going to give you guys like 30 seconds now. Speak up or forever hold your peace. Just kidding. I'm very active in the Discord. So if you guys have any questions later, uh, obviously feel free to ask me. And, you know, this one is, is like I said, it's hard to understand. But once you get it, you got it. And once you got it, you're good, you know. But yeah, any, any last questions before I wrap this up? Okay, I think we're, we're going to call it a day then. Uh, to the newcomers, welcome. I know we have quite a few new people in here, and this is the largest live uh, on Discord that we did. There's about 20 people in here, so I appreciate each and every one of you. For the YouTube people, I'm talking to you now. If you like the content, please like, please subscribe. We hit 150 subscribers in just three three weeks. I'm trying to get to 200 by the end of this week, so this Saturday, which is uh, four days from now, the 21st. I'm trying to get to 200. I would love to get that. Um, that would keep me super motivated. I mean, I'm going to keep doing this anyways. But anyways, nonetheless, I really do appreciate everyone tuning in. If you made it to the end of the video, I can't describe how much I I appreciate you um, for helping me with that watch time. And again, you know, join the Discord. We have a great community. The Discord has over 100 people in there now. Pretty, pretty crazy to to see how far we've come in like three weeks. Again, none of this was planned. So I really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, we'll catch you next time. Feel free to ask questions and, you know, apply your knowledge now in real time. All right, guys. Thank you and take care. See you.